In 1996, ecologist Robert Chen stared at dead Costa Rican land that refused to recover after decades of ranching. A nearby orange juice company was drowning in disposal costs for tons of waste peels. Chen proposed an unconventional solution that sparked immediate controversy and a lawsuit that shut everything down. When researchers finally relocated the abandoned site 15 years later, they stopped dead in their tracks. In 1996, Robert Chen stood at the edge of a wasteland, an ecologist working in Costa Rica. He'd been studying this patch of land for weeks. 20 years earlier, ranchers had cleared the forest to raise cattle. They'd abandoned the site years ago, but the land they left behind was broken. The soil had been compacted until it resembled concrete. Rain ran off instead of soaking in. Seeds struggled to take root, and those that did rarely survived. Chen walked across the barren ground, documenting the desolation. The problem gnawed at him. Restoration projects were expensive and required years of careful work. The government had limited funds and this remote section wasn't a priority. Chen needed a solution that didn't rely on massive funding. Around this same time, executives at a nearby orange juice company were facing their own crisis. Their facility processed thousands of oranges every week, generating pounds of waste, peels, pulp, and rinds with no commercial value. Trucks hauled the refuse to disposal sites hours away. The transportation costs and dumping fees were bleeding money. Chen heard about the company's waste problem through a colleague. An idea formed in his mind. What if the solution to both problems was to bring them together? The orange peels were organic material, rich in nutrients. The degraded land needed exactly that to rebuild the soil. He contacted the juice company with his proposal. Instead of paying to transport waste elsewhere, they could dump it on the dead land. The company would save money and the land might benefit from the organic material. After several meetings, they agreed to a trial period. One year, the trucks started rolling in. Week after week, they arrived at the site, releasing avalanches of orange peels and pulp. The waste piled up across several acres. Bright orange mountains formed where barren ground had been. Local residents noticed immediately. Was this legal? It looked like an illegal dump site. But it wasn't just residents who took notice. A competing juice company saw an opportunity. If they could shut down this cheap disposal method, their rival would return to expensive waste transportation. They filed a lawsuit claiming the practice violated environmental regulations. The case went to court. Chen testified about the potential benefits. The juice company stressed the cost savings and environmental logic, but the competing company's lawyers hammered on regulatory violations. Months passed as the legal battle dragged on. Meanwhile, the orange peels sat on the land, slowly decomposing. Then the judge issued his ruling. He sided with the plaintiff. The dumping violated environmental regulations. The juice company was fined and ordered to stop immediately. Chen's experiment was over. The site was abandoned. No one saw any point in monitoring a failed project that had lasted only one year. Chen moved on to other research. The location faded from public memory. Years passed. The controversy became a footnote. Fifteen years later, researcher Patricia Morales was reviewing environmental projects in Costa Rica's history. She found a thin folder about orange peels being dumped on degraded land. The project had been shut down after only one year. There was no follow-up documentation. It was listed as a failure. But something caught Morales' attention. What had actually happened to that land? Even failed experiments provided valuable data. She decided it was worth documenting. 
Finding the site proved challenging. The original GPS coordinates weren't very precise. She spent weeks with local guides trying to match old descriptions with current geography. Finally, they identified an area that matched the historical records. Morales and her team hiked to the site on a humid morning. They carried equipment to take soil samples and measure vegetation. She expected to find modest improvement. They reached the coordinates and stopped walking. Morales stood completely still. Her team looked equally confused. This couldn't be right. Before them stood a thriving forest. Tall trees stretched upward, their trunks thick and healthy. The canopy blocked much of the sky. The forest floor was covered in rich leaf litter. Vines wound around tree trunks. Birds called from branches above. One of the guides checked their GPS again. This was definitely the location. But how? Morales walked slowly into the forest, her mind racing. She'd seen the photographs from 1996. The land had been barren, practically dead. This was something else entirely. They began systematic measurements. They collected soil samples, counted tree species, measured trunk diameters, then they moved to adjacent areas that hadn't received orange peels. These areas were still struggling. Sparse grass grew in patches. A few stunted trees had taken root. The contrast was staggering. Back at the laboratory, Morales analyzed the samples. Where the orange peels had decomposed, the soil was significantly deeper. Organic content was much higher. Nutrient levels were dramatically elevated. The soil was rich and loose, perfect for supporting plant life. Multiple species of native trees had established themselves. Some were already producing seeds, creating a self-sustaining ecosystem. The forest had multiple layers, developing the complex structure that typically took decades to achieve. The orange peels had done more than add nutrients. As they decomposed, they'd created habitat for insects and microorganisms that aerated the soil. Seeds found purchase in the soft ground. Those first plants drew more insects, which attracted birds, which spread more seeds. A cascade of life had begun from those mounds of discarded orange waste. And then Morales realized something else. The legal battle that shut down the project had actually worked in its favor. If dumping had continued for years, the site might have been overwhelmed. But that single year had provided exactly the right amount to jumpstart recovery. Robert Chen, now retired, received a call from a former colleague. They told him about the forest. His failed experiment, the one that had ended in legal defeat, had quietly succeeded beyond anyone's expectations. The site that everyone had written off had become living proof of something remarkable. Sometimes the simplest solution creates the most extraordinary results. And you, if you had been in Chen's position back in 1996, knowing the legal risks and uncertainty, would you have tried the same experiment?